How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. So if you've noticed, this is a third video where I'm wearing the same clothes. Um, you let me know if that's disgusting or not, because I don't know. I mean, it is kind of the same day, but they haven't been washed in a while either. That's kind of gross. Sorry, that's a weird way to start out this video, but hey, I don't know. I got to be honest, and I'm sure you've noticed if you watch all my videos, which I think you should. Uh, if you don't, um, you should subscribe and watch all my videos because, uh, yeah, it was a great way to like entice you to do that by talking about how gross I am. Anyway, so we got a long list of things I got to do today. Um, a lot of stuff I want to get done. First step is going to be mounting the hydro. So I made the hydro a couple days ago in that video that you guys watched. Uh, so you got to mount it, at least the mount, and then going to run the brake line to the rear brakes and then to the proportioning valve and then from the proportioning valve up to the front brakes and we're going to do the front brakes as well. Um, so we might hold off on the proportioning valve area and going to the front brakes uh, or going to the master cylinder from there just because it might wait until I actually get where the proportioning valve is going to mount into um, probably tomorrow or the next day when I start working on wiring. So once I get all that done, I want to throw the transmission back in uh, because might as well. I was going to wait on the transmission just so I can bolt it up to the engine, uh, but I might as well because I uh, don't think that I've told you guys, but I ran into an issue with the short block. Um, so the engine is not going to be assembled for a little while longer because I had to buy a new short block. Um, the machine shop did a bad job on it, uh, but I'll get more into that in another video. It's not important for this one. And yeah, we'll see. If it's a long list of stuff to do, it shouldn't take too long as long as I just get it done and I don't like drag ass and take forever. Finally got the mount completely mounted to the body and I can still use the stock e-brake uh, just in case because I really wanted to keep that just for when parking because I don't want to use like a line lock or something for the hydro. Uh, that'd be kind of annoying so might as well keep that. It's all hooked up and whatnot so that's what I'm going to do next is run the lines back through here, get the mount for it and hook it all back up. Um, I did end up welding nuts on the back side so you can't see it now but Underneath here, I definitely burnt the crap out of the paint because I welded directly to the other side. So not a big deal. You won't even see it. Um, I mean, I really should have done that before. I even thought about doing it before, uh, but I was lazy and I just wanted to paint the car. So definitely shouldn't have done that. Oh, well, it's done now. So now I can actually do brake lines after I get the e-brake all hooked back up um, and then run the lines to the hydro and then from the hydro to the proportioning valve and then to the master cylinder and do the front brakes and whatnot. So the plan with the hydro for the brake lines is going to be running um, from the input side because it's kind of a weird fitting. Um, this is 7 16 by 24 or by 20. Uh, every inch is the thread pitch, um, which is normal for like Willwood and these master cylinders to be, uh, but that's not like a normal brake line fitting. So I've got this fitting that'll go to it, um, and this is 7 16 20 UNF on this side, um, and dash 3 on this side. So the plan is to run dash 3 AN fittings um, from here to the proportioning valve. Um, and then tie in to the proportioning valve and then just run hard line everywhere else. So that's going to be the only flexible line. Uh, that's literally just for ease of mounting. Uh, and so when it goes up into the dash where I'm actually going to put the proportioning valve to where I can adjust it, uh, that it's not awkward. Uh, like I have to like bend it really weird and I'll be able to actually use that flexible line. Um, so yeah, and I think I'm going to mount it upside down too. 
just so the lines aren't sticking up. Um, I can also get a banjo fitting for this instead of how it comes out straight at 180 degrees so that way it would come out at 90 and then I'd be able to pick up the dash 3 at an angle. I think that would be a lot cleaner and I can do that later. That's not a big deal to switch because the dash 3 fit line is still going to remain the same. I just have to make it but it's going to remain the same. Uh, it would just be changing this fitting and that's it. So yeah, I'm going to mount this exactly where it goes. And then we'll make the rear line first out of hard line and then from there we'll work on making the flexible 3 dash 3 an fitting to the proportioning valve First line is done. Uh, I just need to uh, secure it with some of the pieces that I actually have to secure it. And I got them somewhere in this drawer. I just got to grab it out. That all my junk drawers, literally all, just full of junk. Um, no organizational skills in this garage at all. It's terrible. Uh, but now I'm going to start on the 3 a.m. line, and it's just going to run to pretty much. So it's going to be like two and a half feet long, uh, and then come somewhere over here and then meet up with the actual proportioning valve um, which is going to get mounted into the plate that I'm going to make with all the switches and whatnot and then from there we'll pick up a solid line going from the proportioning valve to the master. These lines that I'm using are a little bit different than the fuel lines that I was using. Um, just kind of like a different style of the AN fittings. So there's three pieces with these. So as you see, you got like your normal female end, and you got the male end that goes into the hose. Uh, but you have this little brass fitting here, and that's the biggest difference. Um, it's pretty easy to assemble these two. The only thing you do is you actually move the stainless sheathing or whatever you're using if you're using like a nylon braided hose you just use that um, and you just move it away so that way you can actually slide this brass fitting over uh, now as i'm saying that make sure you put this end on first the right way so where the threads are facing towards the end that you're actually putting on um, make sure you put it on the right way before you actually put that brass fitting on because if you do that after there's no way that you can get it on over because that's what actually stops this from coming off. So get this piece on. Finally got it over. So now is when you actually pull it apart once you make sure that that is on. Don't be like me and just mess up like that because I actually had to take a little piece off to get that to go on because I was just messing up the sheathing even more. So I'm just going to open it up just a little bit. Once you mushroom it out, kind of like that, if you can see, Something like that. Uh, now you can actually get the brass fitting on. Then you push it on there as far as you can. Then you take a punch, which I don't know where I set my punch. So now you take your punch, since I finally found it, and you want it to like gradually get bigger, and you're gonna put it into that brass fitting and then tap it down. So I'm gonna put this in the vise, that way it can actually hold it, and then I'm gonna tap it down to try to open up the hole a little bit more. Um, and then once I do that, then we're good to lube this up and then tighten it on. Now you're good to actually fold these braided lines back over. Try to get them out of the way so they're not interfering with the threads because uh, they're kind of like going crazy after you do that. Try not to bleed because they're pretty sharp if you meet them straight on. It definitely doesn't feel good. And once you get that up enough, just put a little oil on there like last time so it actually goes in there and doesn't go off the threads. And we have our brake line now. Pretty easy to make, and they really don't take long. And the nice thing about this is you can probably get 
20 feet of this stuff and all the fittings that you need for cheaper than you can uh, like if you're gonna buy like stainless brake lines and they're really easy to make I mean you really don't need any special tools a grinder and some box wrenches and that's it and you can make your own stainless brake lines um, they definitely seem like they're a lot harder to make um, but it's definitely worth it if you can make your own because the nice thing is that they're properly sized usually when you buy stuff like this they come like way too long or you can't get exactly what you need but this way you actually get exactly the size that you need um, and you don't have to like wrap them around and do a whole bunch of extra i used to be the same way where like i never wanted to make stainless lines because i always thought that it was hard it was some like elusive magic that i didn't know how to do and then i did it the first time and i was like oh wow this is really easy so yeah it's pretty easy i definitely recommend doing it if, uh, if you've got stuff that you actually want to run this kind of stuff on uh, but now I need to go grab my proportioning valve. It's somewhere in the house in my mess of parts. Uh, I need to go find that. And then we could tighten everything up um, and then run the solid line to the master and then do the fronts with the fronts. Really shouldn't take very long. Those are pretty easy to do. So we got all of the readers done. Um, I put the little tabs in there to actually hold them. And this definitely looks a lot better than it was. That was such a pain to remove the masking tape off there. Uh, I don't know what kind of masking tape I went with, but it sucks. And it like absorbed the paint and then like became solid with the paint and did not want to come off. So I had to like use a razor to scrape those, which I had to be careful because brake lines aren't exactly um, that strong and a razor could probably take a little bit off of it. It did in a couple areas, but it wasn't too bad, but everything's done from the hydro back. Obviously that's not how the hydro is going to go. So when I make the plate tomorrow for all my switches and stuff like that, that's going to go in there so that I can actually adjust uh, my bias later on. And then this side's done on the front and then it goes to the T and then I just have to do the passenger front now. This is the old line. So I realized uh, that I didn't buy enough uh, of these 3 8 fittings. Um, so that's kind of an issue. I need one more and I don't have any more. Um, somehow I lost all the old ones because this is all old stuff that used to be on there too. And I went and bought some more and I figured I had enough and I don't. So I need to go buy one more from the store tonight. So I can button up all of the brakes. It won't take long to get this one ran. Uh, it's just gonna go from down there to where it actually meets to the stainless line, up through this hole right here, and then from here follow and go underneath the rain tray little lip thing that we got going on here, and then go all the way to that T, and then we'll be done with everything as long as it doesn't leak, which I'm not gonna even bother bleeding the brakes tonight.
of the brake lines are done. Uh, I'm going to put these clips on tomorrow. Uh, I'm done for the night. <laughs> I definitely didn't get nearly as much done as I wanted to, just brake lines. It's kind of disappointing. Wanting to throw the trans in and all that other garbage, but whatever. Speaking of which, they're definitely a lot easier to do with this tool that I have. Um, it's definitely worth it if you do brake lines regularly or if you have to do an entire car. It's almost worth it than just trying to use one of those cheap flaring tools. This one, it's expensive, it really is, uh, but it's one of those things that it lasts, it's gonna last a really long time and it makes doing brake lines a lot easier. So if you don't know what it is, uh, the name of it is Master Cool and it's just a hydraulic flaring tool pretty much for brake lines. So first, they're pretty simple to do. Um, you want like a decent cutter. Uh, this doesn't come with a cutter, uh, so you gotta buy a good one. Um, this one has a reamer in there too. So that's really important when you do brake lines. Cut it, ream the inside out really well to get any of those burrs, get a nice clean edge. That way you don't have to worry about uh, all those burrs and whatnot messing up the actual flare for your uh, brake lines. Then once you have that, make sure you put your fitting on first. And depending on what kind of car you have, uh, your flare is going to be different. So you just got to look it up and then figure out exactly what type of flare you're supposed to do. So pretty much you got like bubble flare and inverted flare and that's about it. Uh, bubble flare is literally just, you do it once with these. Uh, inverted is like inverted or double. So they, it means the same thing. Um, it literally just is called a double flare because you use two different tools to do it. So you do the first flare with this piece. Um, and that actually goes, so it's got that little nipple. That actually goes on the inside of the brake line and gives it that bubble type flare. And then, the reason it's called double or inverted, you finish it off with this second cone piece um, and that's just gonna push the flare out uh, to get it around the actual fitting inside of like your brake lines or your master cylinder or whatever. So Subarus are inverted flares or double flares. Um, a lot of American cars and whatnot are bubble flared. Um, some Japanese cars are too. Uh, so you just gotta figure out exactly what it is that you need. So the way it works, so this is 3 16 uh, brake line that I've got. That's pretty standard. So this is a die for 3 16 and it's for 45 degree inverted flare. So you just throw these in real quick. And then it's got the little slot down there for your brake line to go in and then you just line it up to where the brake line is flush with the actual die. So it's kind of weird to show, but if you can see that, it's flush with the die right now and then you just use the T-handle and you tighten it up and make sure that it stays flush because that's like one of the most important part. You don't want too much sticking out because then it's really gonna mess up your flare. And if you don't have enough, then it's not gonna have enough material for the actual flare to take shape. Then once you finally get it in there and you're ready to start, so you're gonna start off with this piece if you're doing um, an inverted flare. So it says on it, 3 16 45 degree inverted flare. So they make it pretty easy to set up the dies and whatnot. And then you just gotta make sure that it actually goes in the hole of the tube. Uh, because if you are like on the outside with a little nipple, uh, it'll crush the tube and it'll deform it. So then you'll have to cut that piece off and start again. So if it's your second flare or something like that, and you're already measured to your exact specifications, then having to cut off an inch or whatever is really going to kind of screw you over probably. And then tighten up the hydraulics or the cylinder for it. And then you just pump it till you can't. You don't want to go too like crazy tight with it because uh, then you'll like deform the flare as well. Unscrew it. And then you're left with like a simple bubble flare type thing. Um, and then you throw in the cylinder with the cone shaped one on it. And same thing, you gotta make sure that the tip actually goes into that hole. There's a lot of that's what she said jokes going on right now. Which mine did not go in the hole. And then this one, you don't want to go as tight, I found. So like if you go like as tight as you can, like as much as you can grip, 
Usually you kind of like deform the flare too much and you end up with a bad flare that's not going to seal. And there you have it. Pretty good looking uh, inverted flare right there. We're just doing it super fast. Uh, so that's what's nice about that tool. It's really easy to do it on the car too, so you don't have to like do both of them and then feed it in like you saw me do. Um, I definitely wasn't doing it the right way. Usually when you do this, if you want it to be like really neat and nice, you'll get like a coat hanger or like eight gauge wire or something like that that's actually flexible, but it can hold its shape. And then you run it to all the different areas that you're actually gonna go. And once you do that, you get your total length. You cut the piece to length, and then you do all your nice bends and whatnot with the tool, set it by hand, but I'm not really concerned with it. I mean, yeah, it doesn't look the best, but most of it's tucked up anyway, and you can't even see it. So not a big deal to me, uh, but if you're going for like a pretty aesthetic looking brake line uh, application, which some people do that, and it looks really good, uh, it's definitely cool when you see that, uh, but this car is not, going to be like that at all. I mean, it'll be nice in certain areas, but that kind of stuff I'm not too concerned with. But you got to be careful when you do that and you're bending it by hand and stuff like this cuz like this is the old line which obviously I was just kind of bending and whatnot, but it's all kinked and whatnot. So it's it's easy to break this stuff and to render it like to where it's junk if you accidentally kink it. So just be careful with the bends. I do have some tools to bend them, which I didn't even use. So you throw in the brake line in here and then you just fold it over on itself and you can go up to 180 degree churn. Uh, you don't get very tight radiuses with it, but that's kind of the point is so you don't like weaken the actual tube by using something like this. So you can actually make some pretty aesthetic tubes and some good looking brake lines if you actually do that and you take your time. Like I said, not concerned with it. So that's all I got for this one. I think I really fluffed it up too much at the end with showing that, but hopefully you guys, like if you wanted to see it, you got something out of it, maybe you will get this tool now. Uh, it's a great tool though. What I said, it's a little pricey, but tomorrow I'm gonna wake up early and just start kicking this thing in the butt. Uh, I got a lot of wiring and stuff like that to work on tomorrow if I get the trans in. Uh, so yeah, that's some fun stuff to look forward to. Gotta, gotta love wiring. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys. Uh, Whenever the next video comes out, probably tomorrow, we'll see if I got time to edit one. So, see you guys.